It's a sweltering summer day. The sun beats down, turning parked cars into ovens. Inside one such car, a child sits strapped in a car seat. He's crying, he's sweating, he's scared. This is not a horror movie. This is the tragic reality of hot car deaths, a silent epidemic claiming innocent lives year after year. We often think it can't happen to us. We'd never forget our child in the back seat. But the horrifying truth is, it happens more often than we care to imagine. And every time, it leaves behind a trail of shattered families and a community grappling with the unthinkable. These aren't just isolated incidents. They're part of a disturbing trend, a grim reminder of the deadly consequences of heat stroke and our own fallibility. It's time we stop turning a blind eye and confront this heartbreaking reality head on. The lives of our children depend on it. Summer, a time for family vacations and carefree days, also harbors a dark secret. It's when the majority of hot car deaths occur turning the season of sunshine into a period of mourning for far too many families. Statistics paint a chilling picture. On average, 39 children die in hot cars each year in the United States alone. That's one child every nine days. A horrifying statistic that should shake us to our core. And these numbers only tell part of the story. Behind each number is a name, a face, a life tragically cut short. These aren't just statistics. They're our children, our neighbors, our community's future. We can't allow ourselves to become numb to these numbers. We must remember the human cost of this preventable tragedy. The names are etched in the minds of those who love them. Sophia, Liam, Aiden, Maya. Each name represents a life brimming with potential, extinguished too soon in the suffocating heat of a parked car. Sophia, just 18 months old, was a bright, bubbly baby with infectious laughter. Liam, a curious three-year-old, loved dinosaurs and dreamt of being an astronaut. Aiden, a sweet and gentle two-year-old, was his parents' pride and joy. Maya, a vibrant, four-year-old had a smile that could light up a room. These children were more than just statistics. They were sons, daughters, grandchildren, loved and cherished by their families. Their stories, though heartbreaking, need to be told. Their memories kept alive to remind us of the devastating consequences of this preventable tragedy. Section 4 unthinkable lapses, unforgivable acts. How can a parent, a caregiver, someone entrusted with a child's well-being, simply forget about them in the back seat? It's a question that haunts us, a scenario we refuse to comprehend, but the reality is, it happens. Our brains are complex machines, susceptible to distractions, stress, and fatigue. Changes in routine, sleep deprivation, and the ever-increasing demands of modern life can all contribute to fatal lapses in memory. But does that excuse leaving a child to die in a sweltering car? Some argue that these incidents are not accidents, but acts of negligence, even malice. The debate rages on, fueled by anger, grief, and a desperate search for answers. But regardless of the reason, the outcome remains the same. A child's life tragically cut short. Section five, the accountability question. When a child dies in a hot car, who is responsible? Is it a tragic accident, a momentary lapse in judgment with irreversible consequences, or is it a case of negligence? a blatant disregard for child's safety that demands severe punishment. The legal system grapples with this question, 
navigating the murky waters of intent, accountability, and justice. Some argue that harsher punishments are necessary, that stricter laws will serve as a deterrent and force parents and caregivers to be more vigilant. Others believe that the focus should be on prevention, on raising awareness and implementing practical solutions. They argue that punishing grieving parents won't bring back the lost children and that education and support are more effective than incarceration. Section six, a phone call that could save a life. While the debate on accountability rages on, one thing remains clear. We need to find ways to prevent these tragedies from happening in the first place. Simple, practical solutions can make a world of difference. One such solution is as simple as your cell phone. Leave it in the back seat next to your child. That's right, your phone, that constant companion that source of endless notifications can become a lifesaver. By placing your phone in the back seat, you create a visual cue, a reminder that your child is with you. It's a simple act that can prevent a moment of forgetfulness from turning into an unimaginable tragedy. Section seven, break the silence, break the cycle. The deaths of these children are not just statistics. They are a stark reminder of our shared responsibility to protect the most vulnerable among us. We cannot afford to be complacent, to think it can't happen to us. Talk about it, share the stories, educate yourself and others about the dangers of leaving children unattended in cars. Be vigilant, not just for your own children, but for those around you. If you see a child alone in a car, don't hesitate to act. Call 911. Your quick thinking could save a life. This isn't about blame or judgment. It's about saving lives. It's about breaking the silence, shattering the stigma, and creating a world where no parent has to endure the unbearable pain of losing a child to a preventable tragedy. The time to act is now. This is Elliot's Emporium, bringing info that matters. If this video resonated with you, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. We wanna read what you think.